In this video, I'm going to show you how to automatically upload files to Generative Answers with Power Automate from SharePoint. So some of you might be wondering, why would you ever want to do this? The answer is, imagine that you have a document library inside of SharePoint, and instead of you having to go to your uh, conversational agent and then be able to upload the file to that copilot. Imagine you just simply drop them into a specific location and they automatically get uploaded to your copilot for use. This would greatly simplify the process and make it much easier for you to be able to create and update your copilot uh, with the content that you're looking for. Okay, so let's talk about the architecture flow of how this actually works. So the first thing you need to have is you have to have a document library where you're going to upload the files to SharePoint. And then with that, we're going to have a Power Automate flow that uploads the document to Dataverse when it sees a new file dropped in this particular location. And then the last part is that it will make it available in Generative Answers so that you can actually ask questions over that particular document. Okay, so now we're inside of Copilot Studio, and I want to show you where we'll be uploading the files to. And there's a, cute, a few key things that we'll need to look at as we go through this. But we're going to first go through a demo, and then I'm going to show you how it all works. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over here, and we're going to look at Settings, and we're going to go down to the Generative AI tab. You'll see here that you have the ability to upload files here. And sure, I can just click a button here and upload a file. Um, but that's how a bot author would have to go about doing this in order to be able to add it in. But what we're going to do here is we're actually going to do this through a Power Automate flow and automatically upload the files directly in. So let's go and actually do this really quick. So I'm going to jump over to this... HR site that I've created that's just an example HR site that you can create inside of SharePoint. I had made a folder here that is called HR Docs. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag a file directly in here. And when I drag this file in, you'll see the employee handbook will uh, drop right in. And now what we want to see is we want to see that we have this Power Automate flow. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to refresh this. Know that this runs on an every three minute basis. Okay, so we see that now it's running and we go through and it succeeded. So now if we just simply come back over and we take a look at this page and we just have five on our browser to refresh. And voila, all of a sudden now we have our employee handbook file that has been uploaded directly into our Copilot. Now, one other thing I want to show you is that if you also go in and create yourself a solution uh, like I've done here, and I also hit F5, you're going to see that it's not going to show in here that we've uploaded the file. The trick to being able to update that is just go to the actual Copilot here and say add required objects and then click OK. Now, by doing this, if you're packaging up for uh, upper and lower environments and things like that and have a uh, DevOps pipeline that you're building, you can see here that it added the additional bot file attachment right here. So I just wanted to make sure that you could see that this actually adds it to the full-on solution. And I recommend that before you get started, just to create yourself a solution um, so that you can see this and make sure that you're seeing this in the correct location. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into how this actually works. So the first thing you want to make sure that you're aware of is you're going to need a SharePoint location. And in this case, I have created a document library that I call HR Docs. It's inside of an HR site that I provisioned. So if you need to know how to provision a uh, document library or something of this nature, um, there's plenty of documentation uh, on how to do that. So I'm not going to get into that here. However, what we want to do is jump over to Power Automate. And let's take a look at this flow that I created and figure out exactly what did I do to make this all come together. So the first thing that you, you're going to need is you're going to need to be able to use the trigger. And the trigger you're going to want is this when a file is created in a folder. And 
I know that it says it's deprecated, but it still works today. Second thing is you're going to want to be able to, of course, can use a connector and go through the process of actually authenticating. And if you haven't done that already, it'll make you do it whenever you go to use this. Um, and the way that I created this is I just went in and created an automated cloud flow. So you don't have to start uh, with inside of Copilot Studio. You just go straight to Power Automate and say that you'd like to create one. So let's go back over here and let's look at this one. So let's open it up. Okay. So again, you'll need to say when a file is created in a folder, you'll select the site and you can see here in this drop down list that you can see all the different ones that I have available. So this will show up like that. Then you'll also see that you have a folder ID and the folder ID you can click here and it'll give you the list of all the different folders that are available. In this case, I'm using the HR docs because that's the one that we wanted to use. Okay. So if you heard me earlier, I said that it takes three minutes for it to pull. You can even come in here and change the time frame. Actually, I've set it to one minute. The default is three. Um, so if you want to change that, that's where you can change that configuration. Uh, in other co companies or larger companies, you may want to let it take time to be able to go do this so that you're not constantly pulling the server. But for our, my demo environment, I'm doing it a little differently. The next thing you want is you're going to come in here and you're going to add, and in case you guys didn't know, you can add an action. And you're going to want to say that you want to get the file content. And so in order to be able to pull the file down and be able to pass the data into the uh, Dataverse location that we're going to store it, we're basically going to need to, make it to go get the file content from, from the actual location. So in order to do that, what I'm doing is I'm saying that this is the site that I'm going to pull it from. Again, that site was already populated uh, and, and such. Now, if you wanted to have a flow that did this and you wanted to use dynamic variables, I imagine you could do that. I personally would say I would manage this with independent um, Power Automate flows. I wouldn't do a single Power Automate flow that does all of them. I just think that would be too difficult to manage and could be extremely complex. So in this case, the thing that you're going to want to put in is going to be this uh, right here. And so uh, the way that you get it is you can come in here and you click the dynamic content. And in this case, what we're wanting, if you can see this here, is the trigger output, which is the header of the file identifier. And so when you see that, it's this one right here that you're looking for. Now, what is that? That is what file just got added. So that way, the process before, when it says there was a file edited, you're pulling in the information here to say, this is the file that was just edited. So you're just getting that information so that you can get that file's content. So it's kind of think of it like this is the name of the file. All right. Then the next step you're going to do, and again, as always, you just hit add an action. You want to do a get the file metadata. Now you're going to do the same thing. And this is important because we're going to need the metadata around the file to be able to build a row inside of Dataverse in a little bit. So it's important to know that you're going to want to grab this. Okay. So what we do, do is we say the site address is, of course, the... HR website, and then we're going to need to do the same thing here. And again, if you notice, you have this here where you can click and grab it. In this case, what we are grabbing today is the file ID. So it's the same thing we did before. And again, I'll show you where that is. It's right here. It's this one. Because what we're doing is we're grabbing the file, uh, the again, the file name, to be able to go get the metadata from it. And that will create us all the variables that we'll need in a second to be able to start building things. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to go and create a row in a selected environment. Now, the way that this works is that you're creating a solution 
inside of um, Dataverse, there is a table that we want to create a row in for your particular bot. And that's going to require us to know a little bit about the fundamentals of how Dataverse is working underneath the bot. However, for most people, you can just follow these instructions and I'll make sure that you see how I'm doing it so that that way you can understand what all you need to do. So there's a couple of things that need to be done. The first is you need to choose an environment and the environment that you're going to need, I selected current. You can select the exact environment if you would like, it's up to you. Either way will work fine. Then you're gonna to need to select the table name and notice that you can click these things and they have all this information and you're looking for chatbot subcomponents and you'll see it selected here. The, and just to think of it that this is a subcomponent of a bot, it's not an actual bot. Then you're gonna choose the component type and again, you'll have all of these different options and you'll do bot file attachment. Once you've done that, you have to come up with a schema name. Now this is really important that you understand that the schema name has to be unique in your environment. So what you don't want is the same file name being used everywhere. Um, so what I've done in order to do this is I basically made this CRDEB uh, underscore and then I did HR Copilot, which is the name of the bot that, uh, that we're using. And then I do dot component. And then what I'm using here is, and I'll hover over it so you can see it, is that I'm actually using the metadata to get the file name. And so if you want me to show you where that is, I'll do it really quick. It is in the metadata, you want to get the, the name of the file from right here. I have then put an underscore in, and then because of the fact that if you delete the file and then you want to do another one or something like that, what I want to do is make sure that it is always a unique name. And in order to do that, I basically am using this command here, which is a PowerFX query that's just choose a random number between zero and 2000. Now, if you notice here the way that you add that one in is you actually hit this button here uh, for the power effects button and that will give you the ability to put this in and it's just rand open parentheses zero comma two thousand close parentheses right there so that's that's the trick on making sure you get a unique name because it will fail if you don't have a unique name. And it took me a while to figure out what was the best way for me to be able to do this. Now, there's one other thing here, and just know that right now we're, um, you can say show all if you'd like to show all the parameters, but what, the thing that you're gonna need is you're gonna need the parent bot ID has to be filled out. And the way that you're gonna do this is you're gonna say uh, the bots with an open bracket right here, and then you're gonna close the bracket and you need your bot ID. Now, where do we get the bot ID? The bot ID, like I've said in some other videos, is actually located in the URL itself. And so you will find the bot ID after the word bots in the URL. So you'll see it right here is the one. So you can copy it from there and go back to Power Automate and then just put it between the parentheses here on this bots. Okay, so now the last step is, because that creates the row in the table, the last part is we actually have to upload the file to that row. And so what we'll wanna do is you'll check that you wanna get the environment. Again, I'm using current. You can use the direct one if you need to then you're gonna to need to be able to get the content name. And again, we're going to use that metadata on that we pulled before. And again, if you need to see where that is, you come here and you'll get the name right here and put this into the content name. The other thing you'll need is you'll need to say the table name is again that chat chatbot subcomponents. So the next thing you need is you need the row ID. 
which is going to be that you need to get the bot component ID. Now the way to get that again is on the selected record or the new uh, row component that we built. And we're gonna come over here and say see more and then we're gonna look for it in here. And you'll see it right here is bot component. So once we select that, the next part that we're going to need is the file data selected as the column name. And you'll notice that once you do this, it will be the only one available. So if you're doing this right, that will be the only thing that shows. And then you've got the last part. And the last part is we actually need to provide the binaries, the actual uh, file that we're uploading. So where do we get that? You're gonna see that we're gonna get that from the body or the get file content component. And remember we did that, that was one of the first things that we did. So let's go show where that is. So if you go out, up and you scroll down to get file content, you'll see right here is the, the file content. Now, once you've created this, you'll need to save it. And then what, and once you've saved it, what I recommend you do is come back out and test it. And so the best way to test it is we're gonna do it again this way, I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna drop a couple of files. I'm gonna drop the travel policy, and I'm gonna drop the benefits summary, um, both in. Now, what we should see happening, if, the, if we've done our uh, work right, is within a minute, and you see these are already running, and they both succeeded, we can come back over and do our, and do our refresh on our browser. And as you can see, we now have all of our files are now uploaded. It was just that easy. So, okay, so now let's test it. Let's ask a question on, do we require background checks? And what you're gonna see is that it's going to use the employee handbook as a way to answer the question here. And you can see it's just a sample that I'm using um, as far as this background. And here's all the references and everything from where it got it. So I hope this was really informative for you guys. This is really exciting to me because I know a lot of companies that will really take a lot of benefit in being able to do this. And you can also set up a manual process, but now you've got everything where you can go and automate this whole process within Power Automate. So if you like these videos, just go ahead and like and subscribe. As always, you can go try uh, Copilot Studio at aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio.